Hello, and welcome to writing school. Or should that be writing school? Because it is. I'm Richard Vobes, and I'm an author, and I'm going to share with you ways to improve your writing and make your stories really great. And if this is the first time you've been here, you might want to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. So let's crack on, shall we? This is lesson five, show, not tell. A story is more interesting when it's shown and not told. What do I mean? I know it sounds confusing, showing, not telling, because when you write a story, you're telling the story, aren't you? That's true, you are. But when you show the story as well as tell it, it becomes a lot more engaging. It's almost as if the reader is in the story themselves. So telling a story is a bit like reading a newspaper. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like a reporter reporting on something. A man today was sent to court for stealing a bun. He took the bun from the local bread shop and ran off without paying. As a consequence, he was fined five days in prison and a smack bottom. That's telling a story. Showing places the reader into the action. Remember the last lesson when we were talking about Jack and Jill, the nursery rhyme? Jack and Jill go up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Well, that's telling a story. How would you do it if you were showing the story? And I don't mean holding up a bit of paper either. Showing the story is about what they did and how they felt. For example, Jack dug the ball of his toes into the firm mud and pushed himself upwards. Perspiration soaked his hand as he wiped his brow. As his breath increased, he caught the whiff of the peppery dried earth. So here we're still telling the story, but we're showing in more detail what happened. And adding those details makes it so much more interesting, don't you think? You see, Jack doesn't just simply go up a hill. We feel him labouring up that hill. We hear his breathing. We know that he's getting covered in sweat. And we smell the state of the earth too. Let's add some more, shall we? Jill dropped back her feet slipping on a greasy patch of grass. She clasped her legs to stop them trembling, and she wondered why she hadn't stayed at home. Now we know more about Jill too. We know she's not very strong as she climbs up that hill. We know her legs tremble, and we also know that she didn't really want to be there in the first place. Perhaps she knows that something terrible is likely to happen. You see, showing uses all the five senses taste smell sight hearing and touch were that five senses that was five wasn't it taste t touch hearing the crows cawing circled the pair and made them shudder the dust kicked up by jack's leather shoes tickled jill's nose showing adds interest to the story, putting in those little tiny details of what happened and how they felt, really makes that story interesting. Homework. Yes, I know, we don't like to do homework, but this homework is fun. Take another nursery rhyme, or any little story, and see if you can then change the simplistic plot of he does this and they do that and they go there into how he does this and what is he thinking or what is she feeling as she does that. See if you can show your story rather than just simply tell it. Well, that's all we've got time in this lesson. I hope you'll join me again next time and make sure you don't miss a single episode by subscribing. Thank you for watching Writing School or is that Writing's Cool? And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.